Hello, everybody. My name is Antonio Petroli. I work as a data engineer in the field for Pivotal Software, and I'm here today to bring you a tutorial on how easy it is to stand up a Greenplum cluster on Amazon's Marketplace. For those of you who don't know, Greenplum is a massively parallel processing data platform which enables you to do powerful and rapid analytics on petabyte scale data volumes. If you want more information on Greenplum, check out our website in the link at the bottom of this video. So for this tutorial, we're going to spin up a six server Greenplum cluster on Amazon Marketplace. So let's go to the Amazon Marketplace, aws.amazon.com slash marketplace. So we're going to want to go to the search bar at the top here and type in Pivotal Greenplum. Now there's two different offerings that we have, both of which are separated only by the licensing model. The first one that we have is our bring your own license offering. So if you're already a Greenplum customer who has purchased licenses through Pivotal and want to use them, you can use this offering, which charges you only for the AWS infrastructure costs on your cluster. The other offering we have is based on a metered licensing model, which charges you by the hour. So for those of you who don't have a Greenplum license and are looking to try out Greenplum on AWS, this is the offering that you would choose. Now keep in mind that both of these offerings give you the same exact functionality, the only differentiator here being the licensing model. So let's go ahead and click on the hourly offering. So from the metered pricing offering page, you're going to see a whole bunch of different information about what we have here. A few things that you're going to want to see are the product overview. This is going to give you some information about Greenplum itself and what it offers. Another thing that you'll see is if you scroll down, you'll find some information about the estimated costs of running your instances with Greenplum. I won't go into the details, but the main thing that I would point out is this cost table on the right side here. You can see what the EC2 hardware costs are estimated at, as well as what we charge for licensing per hour based on your instance type. If you scroll down a bit more, you'll see the usage information. This is probably going to be of interest to those of you who have some deeper AWS knowledge and want to understand things about the architecture of the services and configurations that we use in our offering. For instance, you can see if you click the View CloudFormation Template dropdown what the topology of all the services looks like for this offering. Scroll down a bit more and you'll see the Support Information section. So if you have any questions regarding our Marketplace offering, this is the email address you can send your questions to. We also have information here about how you should format your email when sending questions about Marketplace. Finally, at the bottom, we have our customer review section. If you spin up a Greenplum cluster and want to leave feedback for it, this is where you can do it. We're always looking for feedback and possible new features that we can implement on Marketplace, so your feedback is always welcome. With all of that being said, let's jump into the steps for spinning up your cluster. So let's go ahead and go back to the top of the page. In the top right corner, you'll see a button that says continue to subscribe. Subscribing to a product simply means that you have accepted the terms of the product as shown on the product's listing page, including the pricing terms, as well as the software seller's EULA agreement. Keep in mind that there are no upfront cost implications when subscribing to the Greenplum Marketplace offering. You only pay for your license hourly when your cluster is up and running. If this is your first time running our Greenplum offering on Amazon, you'll have to subscribe to it and you'll receive an email shortly after confirming your subscription. So let's click the continue to subscribe button so we can subscribe to our marketplace offering. So once you've done that, you still have to accept our software terms. So this is more based around the end users EULA, which is pivotal, as well as the customer agreement that AWS has in place. So let's click that. So once you've clicked that, you're going to see a big green box that says, thank you for subscribing to our marketplace offering. It does take a few minutes for this to complete. So what you're going to want to do is go to the bottom and click the return to launch page. So now that we've clicked that, we should be good to go. So we have a few options from this screen before we actually jump into the CloudFormation interface. The first one being that you can select the marketplace version that you want to use. We always recommend that you go with the latest version of marketplace as it will always contain the most recent version of Greenplum from when that marketplace version was released. On top of that, our engineering team is always releasing cool new features for Greenplum on AWS, so the latest version will always have the most recent features that have been implemented. The only other dropdown you need to worry about is the region that you're spinning up the cluster in. For me, I'm based on the East Coast, so it makes the most sense for me to select the US East region. For others, this is going to vary, and you should select the closest region to you or your data center. 
One thing to quickly note is that in the bottom left corner of the page, we do have a release notes document, which will highlight all the new features, bug fixes, as well as general information about our offering. I'm not gonna go into it now, but I encourage you to check it out so you know more of the advanced features that we have to offer. So if you look at the left column over here at the bottom, there's a button that says launch with CloudFormation template. So we're gonna to wanna to click that and that's gonna take us to our launch configuration page. So the first page that you'll see says select template. For us, you can just go ahead and click the next button in the bottom right corner of this page as it's already selected our CloudFormation template. On this next page, you'll see some configuration options for your cluster that we're going to be spinning up. So for the first option, we have a stack name. What this value represents is what your Greenplum cluster stack name will be in CloudFormation. Keep in mind that you can't reuse a stack name based on your account. So if you've already created a stack name called Greenplum cluster, you will have to provide a different unique name. Otherwise, it will throw an error when you try to launch it. I'm going to go ahead and call this one Greenplum Marketplace Tutorial Cluster. The next option that you have are your availability zones. So this is an Amazon setting which allows you to pick a zone within the region that you've selected. The purpose of availability zones is really just to allow you to select different data centers within your region in the case that you want to replicate or set up disaster recovery options across multiple data centers. For the sake of this demo, you can really just select any availability zone as it's not going to affect us. Next, you'll see the cluster instance count. Now, this represents how many servers you'd like to have in your cluster. Keep in mind that Greenplum is a distributed data platform, so the more servers that you have, the more resources like memory, CPU, and disk throughput you'll have. Along with that, Greenplum has a master and a standby master server, and what are called segment hosts, which is where your data lives on. So for any of these values that are greater than one, the amount of servers that host your data are going to be n minus two n being the cluster instance count that you pick. So if I select six for my cluster count, I will have four servers that host my data and two servers for the master and standby master. This is somewhat similar to the concept of a name node and standby name node for those of you who come from the world of Hadoop. Now what's also great about this is we have a single server offering. What this means is that the master host and the data servers are all on one single machine. This can be great if you're looking for a low cost way to play around with functionality and make yourself more familiar with Greenplum. However, keep in mind that a single host doesn't provide anything from a high availability perspective if an entire host goes down. So we don't recommend running any long-standing or production workloads with this option. I'm gonna go ahead and click six nodes for this demo so you can see what Greenplum looks like in a distributed fashion. The next option that we have is instance type. Amazon offers a multitude of instance types, all of which offer different resource configurations, network speeds, as well as disk configuration options as well. For Greenplum, we recommend the R4 series and the D2 series for various workloads at this current time. You can find more information about instance types in Amazon's documentation. If you click this dropdown, you'll see a ton of different options for instance configurations. These range from direct attached storage to elastic block storage and even encrypted storage options. I'd recommend you spend a little bit of time understanding what each option gives you and what the cost implications are. But for this demo, I'm gonna select a medium sized instance type with elastic block storage in the R4 series. The next thing that you'll see is key name. If you don't already have one created, you'll have to go into your AWS account and create one. The key name is a private key for the public key authentication within your cluster. When you create one, it'll automatically download it to your machine. So from this dropdown, you'll just need to select the key name that you've created so you can SSH into your cluster. Finally, on this page, you'll have the SSH location parameter. I highly recommend you set this to a pretty locked down CIDR block. So we don't recommend you type something like 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, as this will open it up to the entire world and you'll probably receive emails from Amazon about random bots trying to access your cluster since it's completely open. I recommend that you use your IPv4 address. You can do this by going to a website like whatismyip.host. So this will tell you what your IP address is. So what you should do is copy this, go back to the create a new stack page and paste this into your SSH location. And then finally, what you're gonna wanna do is put a slash 32 at the end.
This will tell Amazon that only people from your exact IP address are allowed to access the machine. If you don't have a static IP address, you might want to change this or open it up to accept more bits within your block as your IP address might change over time. So once you've done all this, you can click the next button to take you to the next page. So there's a ton of different optional parameters that you can select on this page, and you don't actually need to set any of them to continue. I'm not gonna go into the details of each section, but feel free to go through it and drop a comment on this video if you have any questions about it. So for us, we're just gonna click the next button. So this last page that we have here is a review page. You can read over everything here to make sure you've set everything correctly. Once you're sure it's all set, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a checkbox that says, I acknowledge that AWS CloudFormation might create IAM resources. You have to select this checkbox to continue. What this does is creates a new IAM role which will be responsible for sending and creating all requests to Amazon to create the resources needed for your cluster. Simply put, an IAM role is an entity that defines a set of permissions for making AWS service requests. Keep in mind that IAM roles are not associated with a specific user or group. So by clicking this checkbox, you agree that Amazon will be creating this role to manage all resources created in your cluster. Keep in mind that at this time, IAM roles don't have any cost implications, so there's nothing to worry about when creating a new one. Finally, after you've clicked that checkbox, it's time to deploy your cluster. Let's go to the bottom right corner of the page and click the Create button. So this is gonna take you to the CloudFormation Management page. What you'll be able to see here is all of your stacks that you create, as well as the status of them and all the different configuration options. If your stack doesn't come up immediately, click the top right button up here, which will refresh the stacks that you have. Depending on the size and instance type that you picked for your cluster, this process can take 20 to 80 minutes to complete. Keep in mind that Amazon puts service limits on your account when you create it. So for instance, you might not be able to spin up six large machines, which will result in an error when you create your cluster and it will roll back all of the resources associated with it. Amazon makes it really easy though to put in a service limit request, so you can go to the following page at the bottom of the video below to understand how to do that. Assuming that you don't hit any service limitations, CloudFormation will now begin to create all the resources needed, spin up all of your servers, install, and start Greenplum. You can see on this page a list of all your CloudFormation stacks that you've created. The one at the top is gonna to be the most recent one that you've created, and in our case, it's gonna be the Greenplum cluster. At this time, you can step away to make a cup of coffee or catch up on some emails. Be sure to check back every 20 minutes or so and wait until the create complete status shows up on your stack. You might have to refresh the page while waiting for this. So we're back and our cluster is now up and running. And we can tell that from the create complete status, which can be found right here. So now if you click our stack name, you're gonna see a bunch of tabs on the lower half of the screen. If they don't appear, you can click the different window sizes in the bottom right half of the screen to bring it up. What you'll want to do is select the Outputs tab to see all the information about your cluster. What we want is the master host IP address value, which can be found right here. So go ahead and copy that IP address. And now what we'll want to do is open up your terminal or whatever application you'll be using to SSH. I'm on a MacBook, so I'll just be using my terminal. So if you remember from earlier in this video, we mentioned the key pair file that we'll be using to access the cluster. What you'll wanna do is either go to or know the directory that that key pair file is located in. From here, I'm gonna be running a command that's gonna be ssh-i, I'll add in my key pair file, and then finally gpadmin, which is our database super user, at the IP address that we copied and pasted. If you're on Windows, this will look a little different and you'll most likely be using an application like PuTTY. You may need to configure PuTTY to use your key pair file, so consult their documentation if needed. So once you've SSH'd in, you're gonna see this big welcome splash screen, which is gonna have a bunch of different information about your cluster. We'll have some connection information up here, so you can use the PSQL command line utility to interface with the database. You can also connect to the database from a remote host. There's connection details in the output section of our CloudFormation stack. Things such as the user you'll be logging in with and the password that you can use, which is set dynamically when you spin up your cluster. 
So what we have here is a directory that contains scripts to install some of our optional database features, such as running PLR on the database, for instance, or even installing Greenplum Command Center, which is our GUI tool that you can use to monitor and manage resources in the database. Next, what we have is our validation scripts directory, which can be found here. This is going to contain scripts to execute things such as the TPC DS benchmark suite, or even our own utility GP check perf, which will run a bunch of different Linux utilities to show you things such as the disk throughput that you have, memory bandwidth, and network bandwidth. Towards the bottom, you can find your database information. So in this case, we're running Greenplum 5.2.0. Uh, we have our master data directory, which is going to contain different things like configuration files, as well as the total number of segments that we have across the cluster. So we have 16 total segments. Once you're ready to tear down your cluster, all you have to do is go back to the CloudFormation console, click your stack name, click the actions button, and click and confirm the delete stack button. This process can take a few minutes, so just like creating your cluster, you'll have a few minutes to step away if need be. So that's it, guys. Thanks to everyone who took the time to watch this tutorial, and hopefully it has been helpful for you, and you now have a Greenplum cluster up and running on Amazon's Marketplace. For more information about Greenplum, as well as the documentation that's available, please go to pivotal.io slash pivotal-greenplum. Cheers, everybody.